it, man. So we made it past security. Thumbs up. We're, we're safe. We're safe right now. We're safe right now. Welcome. Bienvenidos. Alright. I know, right? Alright. Uh, nice. This is the uh, onward to the uh, registration or something. We're checking. Oh, checking it to the left. It is to the left. It is to the left. More security. What security is that? Thank you, thank you. I mean, it is 11.34, we got here at around, ten minutes ago. yeah, 10 minutes ago. I mean, this is a uh, ship that holds, what, 3,500 maybe? Oh, morning, morning. Thank you. All right. Massive hangar. Huge. So this is the uh, Viva port. Building. Well, all right. Hi. Right. Thank you. The Haven. What's priority access? I don't know. I know, right? There's no. Um... All right. So we just found out that uh, here there is no special line for platinum members and uh, yeah that hurts so we're we're with the regular folk but yeah so there is no unless you have a, unless a, a haven the if you had a haven or priority check-in there is uh there's nothing for us platinum members i don't know it's crazy but uh line is moving fast Okay, so the uh, we got the cards. Oh. Everything is. Uh, the cards in my pocket. Yeah, it was uh, pretty pretty quick. It wasn't wasn't that long. <laughs> Nothing. We were we were chilling. <laughs> so yeah, look at that. Look at that platinum. That's rough. Too many cruises. Um, but yeah, everything was fairly easy. Fairly easy. Uh, so that's good. No so now sense. now we're about to try to get on the ship. And I think that they're just gonna let us on no matter. Yeah. No matter what. So even if you have a haven, doesn't even matter. Nope. Doesn't even matter. Stay on it. Seems like it. So I don't know. Let's see. Let's find out. Huh. So here she is. Here she is, the Viva. Sister ship to the Prima. We were able to. Uh, just go in after after the check-in. So we checked in, they gave us our cards. The room isn't available or isn't ready until 2.30, uh, which is not bad because it is 12, or it's 11.42 right now. So uh, we're about to go eat in the Indulge. It's fairly easy. Reservations first. Yeah, res oh yeah, reservations first, man. Go to where they are uh, letting people reserve shows and dinners and so on and so forth. But yeah, this is fairly easy. You know, it doesn't even matter if you if you're a platinum or anything else, diamond. I'm that Norwegian guy. Like I, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we we uh, cruised. A house we Sweden. cruised on, on I don't know how many uh, uh, breakaway and breakaway plus class ships. So, you know, we were used to that design, right? And I get it with the new, you know, uh, Prima class. They want it to be a little bit more luxurious. No problem. I mean, but people could also say that those ships are pretty much the same exact design. Each ship. It's like basically the same thing. So... Yeah, but, it, but, on, but the Prima class, the Atrium, it's not... It's not really good. It's not a good, no, good design. No, I, I totally agree with you that with that. I do not like the, the design of the atrium. I think that they... I get why they probably did it. Is to kind of make it a little more intimate. But I think they lost 
the yeah. feeling of having like inclusiveness. Like you only could sit maybe I don't know thirty people down there. I mean, usually you mean in that little in that, in that little, little section section little spot where the entertainer uh, entertainers play. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And that there's also a bar over there. So not only do you have people trying to sit and watch, you know, the entertainer or a little sh- or participate in a little show or trivia, but then you have the bar there too. So that's a little distracting. And it was funny. Side note. So we stayed. We, I'm not. We we were at one the cruise next presentation. And the guy is trying to talk. And they are being so loud at the bar. Like, again, I think they have to think a little bit more in terms of design. That the bar should have been a little further away from that where you're going to have, like, entertainment or someone talking. Because he actually started to get louder and louder. Yeah, and he looked over a a couple of times. Yeah, he kind of gave the mean eye to them. Like, what the heck? Like, it's rude. So... I, again, I think that that's a little bit, a little on the poor side. I don't, poor I don't, design. Yeah, choice. I don't. I just don't like the uh, the way the atrium is uh, designed. Um, again, it's it's beautiful. It's three decks, right? You know, three three decks uh, overlooking the the middle. The center is open. Um, but uh, See, well, my little idea. <laughs> Norwegian just paid me a little commission but um I said that they should have moved you know people usually the entertainers there's like I guess all the setup and speakers and stuff kind of hidden in that area that if they move it closer to like a stairway because there's a stairway that's yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. in the middle yeah. of all the three floors that kind of overlook it perfect it's perfect almost, almost it would have been like right the, there uh, almost like the uh the virgin voyage and yep. the scarlet lady have it there's because there's really no no main uh atrium stage kind of there's kind of scattered here and there yeah but the one that they had down by that i guess you could say main area by the shops and stuff was a bigger seating area than yeah. this that that was way bigger it was. so i think Again, I, I, I get maybe why they did this to make it a little bit more intimate, but I think they kind of lost everybody. You know, like it's making it too small. So really, you, there's not a lot of people that can really see what's going on. I think what saves the Prima, the Viva, is Ocean Boulevard. I yeah, think. that's I, for, I feel like that's probably the one of the highest points. It is. It is the only. It is the only deck only ship i think with with that you know on with a deck that wraps around the whole entire ship. yes so you can go literally front to back all the way around and there's always a spot there's always a seat you know there's always a, you know an area where you can relax on ocean boulevard whereas many ships like even even the icon we're going on the icon in, in, you know the end of march and in order for you to have a view you must be like on the top deck you know where the where the uh, uh, basketball court and all that other stuff is or have a, a, a room with a balcony yeah because if not you can't see out the sides uh, the other thing that I thought was cool about this is as we were docked at the port if let's say you know if you have a room that ha- has a view and you happen to be on the wrong side that day because yeah. you know it's a hit or miss whether you're going to see anything or not. Then you can go on the, and this is what I did at least for a few of the stops, is we went down to the eighth deck, and then walked around the ship and took pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know of of the area. So it was like almost like seeing like a little sightseeing tour, but you're still on the ship, and you can go all the way around the ship and see all the different views. So yeah. I thought that was pretty cool. I think that's why. For, for many, if you're if you're gonna you know sail on a, uh, a Prima or Viva and, and soon to be Aqua, um, you're gonna have that uh, you know I guess the luxury of the you know going to the Ocean Boulevard deck and uh, sitting wherever and relaxing. And again, with the Ocean Boulevard, they have two pools, one on each side. Yeah. And um, infinity pools, infinity not pools. just regular pools. Um, so you, you have the two pools have the indulge uh, section you know all the way in the aft part of the ship which is the bootay 
Um, <laughs> uh, so you have that. Uh, it's, again, it's it's the the bright spot of the prima class uh, ships. Other than that, I don't know. Like it's just it's it's okay. Like it's okay design wise. It's okay. The observation deck, another one. Yeah. You know, I mean, I don't know if I get in trouble with uh, you know DJ Khaled, but another one. <laughs> um, uh, with the observation deck, man, it's I swear, it is uh, it is a miss for me. Like you know, this is gonna be a part of the miss. The miss, you know. <laughs> oh, the hits so and you d- you actually didn't like the observation deck? No, I mean I think it's a cool spot. No, don't get me wrong, it's a cool spot because it's you know it's quiet, it's relaxed, nice space. It's very it's very warm, very you know it, it feels good. Problem for me is, it's just I'm used to the Norwegian Bliss. You know what I mean? The getaway. I think it's the getaway or, or one breakaway. Of them, which has the ob- the observation deck is huge. Well, see, okay, so I was thinking about huge. this. So it was like with two, a piano. It was like two decks almost because yes. remember, I think part of the buffet went out into the de- observation deck on the second floor. Right. So you can actually sit up there and eat, and you were, I guess you could say, technically part of the observation lounge. But, um, but in this one, it's only one floor. Right. It's because floor above floor. you, above you, or, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, above you is the, um, is the spa. Uh, yeah. That's why they took out that. I guess they they basically used that part of the ship for the spa. I I don't know. I, I don't I don't. Because like you remember it. we were sitting in the spa and you were seeing out the front of the yeah, ship. You see how cool it was for you know the the other the other Norwegian ship where it was a two decks and you had the massive oh yeah I, I agree with and you and you had the piano player playing the, tunes there it was the observation lounge on the other ships on the breakaway class of ships not all of them had them not all of them had them and you know I'm I think go, it was bliss and encore I'm gonna go back to uh, our cruises and, and see which one it is and most likely I'll, I'll you know you'll see the information right on the screen right about now yeah <laughs> but I yes I agree with you that those were nicer and they had like you said they had entertainment they yeah. had a person either playing a piano or singing and there's a bar there there was a bar here too but it wasn't wasn't yeah, the you same you know they they, it's, they serve you you know little uh things here and some oh yeah so they also give you like little snacks and stuff or i guess you could Coffee, yeah basically snacks you know like little you know quiche day. Yeah, which, that day they had some quiche which is which is cool so i, I do i do like the observation deck i i, I like it because you know, it's when a, it's not sectioned off for a yeah, private event for for, uh, <laughs> for paintings or whatever for, uh, for, for the artwork. art gallery <laughs> um, but yeah I think it's a it's a good spot to go and just relax and chill play some cards you know get a drink uh, take it easy yeah I have to say that was one of the things I guess you could say touched my heart a little is to see families kind of gathered around and and playing cards or little games and stuff you know um, I thought that that was cute when I recommend cruises to people that i know i am always pushing norwegian because of the food not I know. just the food no no the quality of the food the quality of the food okay so clarify what's your definition of good food where i am full that means i enjoy the food immensely the well, taste and i also the think taste is good I think it also is the selection. Yeah. Because apparently I've been called foo foo a few times here. Who and does, who said that about and you? one in particular foo foo moment is dinner. So I <laughs> like to go to the restaurants as opposed to the buffet for dinner. Because I feel that buffet lunch is great. No hands down, no problem with the buffet lunch. Like I feel like they have a lot of options, everything you you find stuff you're gonna eat. No problem, and everything tastes good. However, for some reason, on the on the dinner buffets, less selection, and I'm not exactly sure why. We've had this discussion. So, I tend to gravitate towards the restaurants where you could just order off menus and stuff, and they do have complimentary restaurants that you can order from. So, that's my my take on dinner in particular. I prefer specialty restaurants 
But yeah, that's the number one preference right. is specialty. I know. And then when we run out of those, then we <laughs> the complimentary re specialty, um, then we'll go to regular complimentary. I think people, people enjoy having a wide variety, a huge selection of things that they can eat. I get that. I understand that. Um, but I also feel that, uh, like, like we discussed, uh, I, I don't know if it was earlier today, yesterday, I don't remember. But I do feel like the the breakfast and the lunch is great, right? Yes. The restaurants, Hands down, no problem. The yes. restaurants are not open during, you know, breakfast and lunch. Um, un unless, unless it's just to eat there. Well, it's you a know. limited number of restaurants that are open for lunch. Just, just to eat your food that you bring, that you take from the buffet or whatever, right? This, those restaurants are not open. Insert the. <laughs> okay, insert. Go ahead. We're gonna we're gonna put in that little sc screenshot from right. the from the flyer. But go ahead. All right. Continue. What's what's the um, what's the insert though? It's gonna be from the the, what do you call those? Those dailies that they give you. Okay. Um, that gives you all the restaurants that are open and the times for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But is it open? For actual food, like yes, they're, they're no, providing... it's not for just seating. Man, so I'm over here. So like... breakfast for seating, Food Republic. It's right across from the buffet, right? From Surfside uh, Cafe or whatever they call it. Um, and then Palomar, which yeah. is the seafood restaurant, the outdoor part of that is open for seating for the, from the buffet. Right. But they're not serving actual food. Right. There are other restaurants that are serving breakfast. It's just it, but again, you have to order off a menu, and you're not getting a buffet style. Breakfast. So it's like a complimentary, yeah, restaurant. Yes, it's like a complimentary restaurant that serves breakfast. Which is uh, the Hudson, right? Um, I'm looking it up really quickly. Okay, so the local is open for breakfast from 5 a.m. to 10:30 a.m. 5 a.m. Yeah, Surfside Grill. That's the buffet. Um. That's open from anywhere from 6.30 to 7.30. Yeah, that's in the back all the way of till, the uh, buffet. But only until 10, which I feel like is a little early, but I understand why, because they serve, they start serving lunch kind of early. Hmm. Hudson's is actually opened also for breakfast, 7.30 to 9.30. Indulge is open for breakfast, 8.30 to 10.30. And then the Observation Lounge, but they, that's more of like a continental type yeah, breakfast. Yeah, continental breakfast. And that's from 9 to, 10, 9 to 11, actually. So, you have been corrected, sir. There are more options than just the buffet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, um, I feel that Norwegian, hands down, is so much better when it comes to the food. Um, you know, again, I, these cruise lines are always lacking somewhere. You know what I mean? Well, yes. What's there's always great, things that you love and things that you're around. What's, what's great so in one area is crappy in the other. Mm -hmm for this particular ship and then it's the opposite on another ship um but for norwegian i feel like it's a it's a cruise you know it's a these ships anyway the prima the viva it's for foodies yeah you know it's for foodies if you enjoy you know um all types of foods um it's not like the virgin voyages where you know the food is the experience yeah no, as opposed to the actual the, food yeah the quality um hands down it's it's, uh, it's for foodies so I, I i enjoyed los lobos right that's like every time we, we you know jump on a uh, norwegian ship we're we're reserving los lobos um so there's usually at least two places that we always reserve off the bat los lobos which is the mexican cuisine and then the second one would be food republic which I would call it like Asian inspired dishes. Cause it could be anywhere Noodles. from Pad Thai to- um, Ramen. Yeah, to ramen, to pot stickers. Yeah. They ha and, and you can also order sushi from there. So um, that would be our, that's always like our number two go-to. Then I guess, because you know, now that we are both platinum, <laughs> we get- You're welcome. And, and we tend to get balcony suites, or not suites, balcony cabin. Um, you get automatically two complimentary specialty dining nights as well. So that makes 
what we get is four. So two off the top, Food Republic, Los Lobos. I would say third sometimes is Cagney. Cagney's, yep. And then fourth is always a toss up. It's, uh... it's always a toss up. So we have <laughs> struck out twice with Le Bistro, <laughs> it's, which is the French restaurant. We've struck out twice already. I don't know why, just kind of things happen. So where we can't go to that dinner. And so that's the one that we have. It wasn't meant to be. I don't think it's meant to be. <laughs> it's an omen. Um, this time we did get to go to Onda, which is uh, the Italian restaurant. It was which good food. I have to say. It was good. Listen, I'm not gonna lie. On a normal basis, when we're home, you know, we tend to eat Italian food pretty often. So I wasn't really super excited about it because I'm like, ah, it's, you know, spaghetti and meatballs like we usually have. Spaghetti and No, not from the can. Shut your it's mouth. Not Chef I Boyardee. do not do Chef Boyardee. I'm just saying, but just making sure that they know that this is not Chef Boyardee. No, I don't do Chef Boyardee anyway. So there's even, though, even though I love... Back in the know, day, yes. Spaghetti not. and meatballs and, 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 and beefaroni. Beefaroni is the best. Oh, but man, with, I, with I haven't had it for years. That, Oh, Ew, man. no. Hey. <laughs> just say, <laughs> no corn. What is wrong not, with you? How do you not like corn? That, your that must be a Harlem thing because that is not a Jersey thing. <laughs> Dude, my mom used to rock that, man. <laughs> oh, I never did that. Have, have you guys ever had? Have you, have you ever had in the uh, comments? <laughs> what is, is this a yay or a nay? Beefaroni, beefaroni with corn. With corn. <laughs> <'Cause> we need to. We, <laughs> we need would to like put that to hear there. your feedback on this because it's a debate now. Um, but. We had Onda, which was pretty good. Um, they actually, it's, you know, obviously it's Italian, but it was a good mixture of, you know, traditional Italian dishes, seafood dishes. I, I thought it was actually a nice selection. So I was pleasantly surprised on that. I, I enjoyed the meal. Um, they had this, like, little weird calzone <laughs> pizza-ish something. like a star. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. I had no idea what, you know. I was thinking it was something else when I was looking at the menu, um, but it was yeah, it was actually pretty good. I didn't think that I would like it because I'm like, ah, it's Italian, you know. What are they gonna give me? You know, uh, I don't know what what do I normally eat fettuccine alfredo with chicken. Yeah. You know, but no, I ordered whatever that other stuff was, and it, it was good. So I must say, um, Onda was actually pretty good. Um, what what other what other restaurants? Besides, well, they have. So you have Hudson's, right? The Commodore well, that's Street. a complimentary restaurant, and so is the Commodore Room. The which Commodore. We still have yet to be. We've never had uh, gone to that complimentary restaurant on any ship. So at some point we have to. <laughs> we have to. Jeez. What, what other uh, specialty restaurants? You, well, yeah, the Hasuk. Was it? I forgot what it's called. Hasuki. Hasuki. Which I believe is like a. It's basically like a hibachi type of restaurant. So they yeah. cook in front of you. Um, and it's like almost like a flat fee, so you just pay for basically a three-course meal, um, and then you get dessert at the end if you'd like. And they have also like a Japanese um, sushi place, yeah, which is Namu Nama Nama, I think it was called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're on the ship, you know, specialty restaurants all the way. Indulge Food Hall is the most um, impressive spot. The, Yummy spot. I don't even know. Like I'm trying to think of so many words. The yummiest. I think it's cool. You get to. I mean, you know. I don't know how people feel about self-ordering <laughs> as opposed to giving your order to a waiter, but um, the the menu is pretty self-explanatory. It was relatively easy to use. You get your food within. I would say. I mean, sometimes you get it in like three minutes. Um, other times, meh, and maybe when it's busier, I would say maybe up to five or eight minutes yeah. that you'll wait for your food. And I mean, it, to me, it's kind of seamless. You can order whatever you want. You don't have to stick to one type of cuisine because there's such a selection. So I, I mean, I honestly think it's a go-to um, for lunch. Well, basically they serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But I would say any time to go, it would be good. Hey, quick tip though, when you uh, when you jump on the, the ship the first day, go to the uh, go to indulge. It yes, is, don't go to the buffet. Yeah, don't go to the buffet. Everybody goes to the buffet. Yep, people forget about the indulge, you know, food hall, and uh, it's it's empty. So, I have to say, I was right. After this experience, I was right. I'm a spa girl. I told you. I told it's just, you. 
So, we're referring to the Mandara Spa. I told on, you how, how great the, that was. <laughs> on the NCL Pre... Uh, well, they're actually on the Prima, the Viva. And I think, honestly, it's the name of the spa on most of the NCL ships. Yeah. Yeah, um, they, they have so, a... But I think they just vary in facility-wise. Yeah. You know, like the size of the facility, the, the things that they offer. So, we've never done a spa before on a ship. Whose fault is that? Minds because I'm co- I'm cost conscious. Um, I'm the, I know I'm the it's screw expensive, up here, man. But um, I have to say that this time I listened to you. But <laughs> because oh, so just a little backstory. So someone wanted to book the whole week of a spa. Oh, it would have been spa. great for a week. And I said no. And that was because the price was like, at it was, that it point, was it was three forty online. Yeah, online. Per person. Yeah. And I thought that just was too much. Yeah, it was expensive. So I said no. So then, of course, as soon as we get on, guess who we walk into? The little representative from the spa, yeah, who's trying to sell you a package and stuff. On our way to indulge. Literally on our way to indulge, and they were offering it for $2.99 per person for the whole week. That's crazy. So someone said, whoa, that's like $50 off of the price online, which is kind of crazy. Usually yeah. it's the opposite. Usually when you get on board, things tend to be a little more expensive. Mm-hmm. But this, I guess maybe they probably didn't sell that many passes, so they were offering them at a discount. And yet I still said no. Yeah. Because I said, again, there's... There, so this particular cruise, the itinerary was basically an island every day. And I told him, I don't think we're going to get that much use out of it. So therefore, I don't want to spend that kind of money. But he talked me into getting a day pass. I did? Yes, you did. <laughs> so um, so we ended up paying like $80 per person, which to me is still a little steep, but a uh, hell of a lot better than $300 per person. Well, if you look at it, remember, we did the math. So I actually I did well, the yes. math at the end and, and it was like forty, forty two dollars a day. Per person. For seven days. If you were to take the, the two ninety nine for the week. Mm. True. However, mm. so basically we just paid double for the one day, but it's only for one day and it's only a, a third of the price, a third of the total price. So this is why I said okay. That what was it? Eighty dollars? Yeah, it was like seventy nine dollars. Dude, that's two days. So what? Worse. But we got the most out of that one day. We went three times so that we got our little $80 worth. Mm. And I have to say, I enjoyed it. Did you really? Yes. I probably sweated off like five pounds. So uh, in that way, I'm definitely grateful. How many rooms were there? Um, all together, I think there's... The Aroma, two, the Aroma four, uh, five, Steam six. Room. The Aroma six Steam Room. Yeah, I think there's six. So it's the Roma, the finish, the finish, and the other one, uh, which the is charcoal also, room yeah, charcoal or whatever. Or something like that. Then you have the Him- the pink Himalaya salt one, and yeah. then you have the infrared, and then you have the ice room. The ice room, right? Yeah. So and then you like have the two, the two, two. Uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call those showers? The I forgot what it's called. I wanted to say it says experimental, but yeah, I, I think, they, I think ex- that's what it was. Experimental showers yeah. or something. I don't remember. We'll make sure to put up the information in the video. But, um, and then they also had like a, a salt, like I guess you can call it a pool. Oh, it was a salt pool, a floating salt pool so that you can float in it. I didn't do that. Um, I did walk lies. into it. And the other one was like a massage pool, which was pretty damn cool. Yeah, it was And pretty it was cool. relatively long. But they kind of put these little barriers so you couldn't get, like go swimming across. Yeah, do laps. Can't <laughs> yeah, do you laps. can't do laps back and forth. Um, and that's basically all of the spa area. Then you had this whole relaxation room. It was quiet. was super quiet. Front of the ship. Yes. Where you, you see the nice area. view because we, we actually did it initially in the daytime. So you can see out and we happen to have the view of the island. Um, so I thought that that was very cool. They had heated beds. They had those wooden ones. Yeah. Like it was like a typical spa, um, but on a ship, which was pretty cool. And I would say that. <laughs> so the first time we went in and came out, we were like, "Whoa, that was that was pretty good." 
The second time we went in and came back out, we were kind of tired after that. We, we were exhausted. We were like, how can we be tired from relaxing? And then the third time was in the evening. It was we a went, wrap. We went after dinner, basically till it closed. 10 o'clock. Yeah. From 8 in the morning to 10 p.m. at night. That's the hours that it's open, not the hours that we went there. <laughs> and I would have to say that for going three times, that made it worth it. Like, to be able to do it three times, you feel, you you got the most out of it. If you go for a couple hours, to me, I don't think it's enough time. Yeah. Um, if you do it one day. If you just do it for one, one day, day a couple hours. Yeah. If you're going to do the one day pass, at least do it two or three times in yeah. that day. So that you feel the full, the full effect of it. Because I feel like... In each of the rooms, you're only supposed to stay within some of those rooms between 5 to like up to 15 minutes, and that's it. Yeah. So you're kind of hopping room. I don't know how we lasted, man. Well, there's Dude, some rooms that how, we couldn't last. I, I swear, you know, and I've heard, I've heard this where, you know, if you, if you're a person who's looking to stop smoking or whatever the case may be, right? You know, you. You want to detox? Yeah, this is like a, a, a detox type of situation where you you go into this uh the finish room it's the hottest room oh my the god the hottest room and so I normally swear. in spas they you see the temperature <laughs> i think they're probably scared to tell you the temperature in that room because that thing was like an oven heat. this is like i like i told you i i was breathing in deep that one real quick you know deep breath from through my nose and i swear it was like a brush fire like <laughs> my my nostril hairs just like you know blew up in smoke burn, or something burst into flames. like i had no like it was crazy like i felt the burn and i i i checked my nose and the first time we could only do like 10 minutes right we only got to 10 minutes the next time it was we did the whole 15 right we went with uh with our aunt it was a good time like it was actually pretty cool to it was nice like bonding time yeah. it wasn't just like sometimes you get a little distracted with the you know sightseeing and stuff like that you don't get the you know a lot of conversation right right um but this is like all you have is conversation when you yeah, when you're, you're sitting in those you're rooms sitting down sweating you're out burning your, sweat you your know pores and yeah the conversations it, it was a it was a really cool experience um i'm glad that we were actually able to try it you know, I've asked others. I asked my cousin who did it. That, you know, that time that we went uh, to Bermuda, you know, she had the week. Yeah, the weekly she did pass. the week pass. Um, she enjoyed it. So I figured, you know what? You know, let's try it. I mean, I got the week. I got the uh, weekly pass on the icon. Mm -hmm. You know, so I don't know how, how that. Without gonna... me knowing, it's a side note. Oh, it's a little. It's I a little, didn't know. It's a little cheaper, um, but I got it for that one. Uh, so I figured this one was a good, you know, good chance for us to to try it, to see if it's, you know, if it's worth it. Um, I felt like it was. I think it was a cool experience, man. But those rooms were ridiculous. Mm -hmm. It was just crazy. Um, so hopefully, I got rid of a lot of toxins. I hope so too. <laughs> Something, you know. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Would you do it again? On the ship. Uh, yeah. I, a, again, I don't think I would do... A I'm, weekly I, pass? I don't think we're ready for a weekly oh, pass man. yet. Oh, Well, maybe. It's, it's, a, it's an... You know maybe what? that Alaska... We'll have that to down... Alaska cruise. We'll, well, maybe. We'll maybe have to downgrade our room to then get to <laughs> a full week spa pass. Because, again, you know, sometimes things are all about budgeting. Right. You know? And so, some things I have to feel like... Yeah. You sacrifice Depends for. on the itinerary as well. You yeah. Know, it depends on where... You know, what we want to to uh, experience uh, the ship the itinerary you know yeah i feel like sometimes if the itinerary is a busy one like there's like more than three stops then i i feel like it's almost not worth it because you're you're gonna get off the ship even if you get off for a few hours so it, your, your your day is gonna go very quickly and then you're not gonna have a lot of time to enjoy the spa so i feel like that's part of my my hesitation yeah i don't want to commit to something that's dollars per person and not really get the full effect of it yeah yeah well we've uh we've experienced it now we dipped our toe in it yeah yeah and we survived it man it was rough but uh yeah it was it was a, a great experience to say the least 
you know, I, on, on the Prima, it was fun. It was the first time on the Prima uh, racing at sea. Solo. Mm -hmm. At sea, which is pretty cool. You know what I mean? No other ship has that. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought it was pretty cool on the Prima. So on the, you know, on the Viva, here on the Viva, I, f I feel like, okay, I know the, the Prima. I know that track because they're pretty much the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I could do this. I'm going to make it happen. Uh. But no. I didn't make it happen. So there goes that one. There goes that one. Yeah, there goes that one. Um, so I told yeah. you it's gonna be a small kid or a tall, skinny guy who, because they're so light that they're more aerodynamic. Maybe. Um, Maybe. Because you wasn't too close. I to need the... to drop like another thirty pounds, I guess. You yeah. Know, I don't know. Um, but you, you know, you do have the stadium. The stadium is good. You know, it's a pretty cool spot. You know, if you want to play ping pong, you know, if you want to uh, do a little uh, seat soccer yeah. thing, majiggy, or the cups. Or they even have, a, what's that, pickleball? They have pickleball. Yeah, pickleball is, I think, the only the only pickleball uh, court at sea. That we've seen so far. I, mean, I don't know. If we so. have yet to go on Icon, so maybe they have one, too. Right, I don't know. But I don't think so. I, I've never heard or have seen anything. But if anyone out there disagrees, you could leave it in the comments. Yeah, like if there's a <laughs> if there's a pickleball court on any other cruise cruise ship, let us let know. us know, man. Drop it in the comments or something, because uh, yeah, from, you know the the pickleball court is pretty cool if you play pickleball now. It's a uh, it's the new it's the new thing, man. Mm -hmm. It's the new thing. Um, so they do have that. They have. The, well, then uh, they, on the other side, they have the uh, the mini golf. Yeah, the electronic golf. You can play for free, but it's not worth it. Yeah, because they I mean, turn it's off not the, as exciting. Uh, yeah, they turn off the electronic stuff. You know, all the all the stuff that's pretty cool visually, they turn that off. Mm -hmm. So you're basically putting into nothing, right? <laughs> no, aren't you always putting into nothing? Yeah, no, but like, it's just weird. It's like I don't know. I it just doesn't doesn't seem doesn't float your boat. Yeah, it just doesn't seem right if you play for free it's best to play uh, or to pay for play um, yeah see that's a, that's I guess one of my little pet peeves is some things that they used to have for free now you have to pay for right so yeah I don't like that I feel like the amount of money that you pay for a cruise almost everything should just be free it should so the best mini golf that we've played on mm -hmm. the it was, I think the the Mardi Gras, right? Well, I like. I think we liked. Yes, we liked the Mardi Gras because I think that was the ultimate playground. And then I think we also liked the one on Royal Caribbean on that Liberty of the Sea. Oh, it was horrible. That was horrible. No, it wasn't. I, it was so cheap. It was so cheap. I, 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 I listen, didn't think it was video, that cheap. The video, the video is up right now, most likely. The video of the uh, no, the, the Royal Caribbean. Um, golf. You didn't put. You didn't. Put I recorded one up. it. I recorded it. Yeah, but did you put it up on the? No, I, I did not. I, oh, okay. I did not even put up anything. Okay, so that you're gonna insert, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it, it was like it was like, like putting down a piece of paper on the floor <laughs> and cutting out a hole. You know that's that's how it felt to me. It was just it was horrible, man. Oh it was horrible. God! All right, the um, so, video coming soon. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, so the 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 Viva also has just like the Prima, the Galaxy Pavilion, which is you know a video game, a, you know a enhanced video game room with a virtual reality. Mm -hmm. So they have you know the golf the golf simulator. They have uh, the Formula One virtual, you know, a cart, uh, go, uh, race car. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, it's a lot of VR things. Dance stuff, uh, shooter games, like it's. Uh, and basically, it's a teenage hangout. Yeah, it was. It was pretty, pretty cool. Um, Expensive though. I'm it not is again. Eight dollars. It's eight dollars per, per game per game per person. Yeah, eight dollars. You can get a, a weekly pass. I think yeah. it's two hundred dollars. I'm gonna, you know, post it uh, right now. Um, it's a, uh, it's it's it is fairly expensive. But if you if you enjoy it, you know what I mean. Then uh, if the parents have the money to, to send yeah. their kids to Galaxy Pavilion, then by all means, you know, put that money down and uh, let them. I'd get rather the, do uh, the spa for two ninety nine <laughs> instead of that. <laughs> I guess, man. Um, again, the activities for kids are less and less less oh but there was a little pleasant surprise 
on this cruise that we didn't notice and I don't know if it was on Prima but it was the the arcade the classic arcade oh yeah games. three uh, arcade machines yes that we found in the local Donkey Kong it's so, in between it's in between um, it's, it's, the bar. it's between the bar and the actual like I guess you could say sit down restaurant part so if you happen to go down that little hallway you'll see three machines you're like <gasps> and they don't take cash yeah, it's free. It's you get free. to play them for free. It's Donkey Kong. It's um, yeah, Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man. On one of like one arcade machine has like I don't know how many games. Yeah, it has in several it. games on and the Miss Pac-Man machine. Then there's the, uh, the Donkey, Donkey Kong, Kong by itself, and then there is uh, Galaga. I think. Galaga, or, or, I think. I don't remember what, which one it was, but yeah. So I guess they're competing with the Virgin Voyages. Yeah. Because Virgin Voyages, you know, they have... But they had a whole room. They had a whole room with retro arcade uh, games. There's other activities as well. You know, you you do have, you know, the game shows uh, on the the ship. You you have the deal or no deal, which is typical. Yeah, every every cruise cruise. has deal or no deal. And everyone has bingo. Everyone has bingo. Um, And and by the way, you do have to pay to play. They have the game show. Yeah, so they have Press Your Luck. We attempted to, <laughs> we applied to be contestants and apparently did not make the cut. It was rough. They, they had the, um, one of the coolest things that we did was uh, the music trivia in the atrium. By far the most I've ever seen of that many people. Group participation. Yeah, participate in something in the atrium for that matter. Because it's always kind of like lackluster. And this, on this ship, again. Yeah, on the Prima there or is, the Beep. Because again, on the other ships, the other Norwegian ships, the atrium is kind of like the, the heart of the ship. And they're, so the activities, the little shows and all they, they do there is, is very, uh, I guess you could say a lot of people, you know, attend it. So there's a lot of participation and stuff. Um, so this music trivia thing was was pretty cool. It was actually I fun. I thoroughly enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, it was really fun. You know, they played uh, like a snippet of music, almost like uh, the Shazam, you know, thingy where you play, you know, uh, yeah, you a few seconds. The, yeah, or whatever you guessed the rest of the song. Uh, it was it was a competition between the decks, deck six, deck seven. Um, you know, it was it was fun. So I actually enjoyed it. It's probably one of the fewest things that I enjoyed on the ship. I guess the biggest thing that we were looking forward to was seeing Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. <laughs> Juice. Um, Beetlejuice. We didn't get to see it. The no. show was canceled. Both shows I within was that so day. so bothered by it. We were very bo- upset with that. Not only us, but everybody else in that line that was waiting for the show. Um, apparently there was an injury or something yep. and they were supposed to reschedule for the next day and then we find out the next day it was not going to be the show it was yeah. going to be some other event that they they did which we had no interest in so we were thoroughly disappointed in that um, so I would say that's number one number two was the icon show so they so what nor- normally Norwegian does is they'll have like a Broadway type production which is something that you would actually you could see in Broadway like Jersey Boys like Rock of, Rock of Ages, Ages like Donna all these Summer other show. yeah like all these other Broadway type shows that we've seen um, so that's usually one of the shows that they have and then they usually have like a, a NCL production so what their own show that they created which is Icon so this one was Icons which is basically you know um, various iconic singers they had a renditions of their songs. I enjoyed it. It that was, was like a, good. It was like a big sing-along. That was pretty you good. You know, because you knew most of the songs. There was a few I didn't know. But the, you knew most of the songs. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so it was a cool experience. And to have, like, everybody in the theater singing along with yeah, you, was, was cool. it was nice. Um, so the third thing I would say is what I love, which are themed parties. <laughs> there was, like, a, a Viva Love... Wait... I'm saying it wrong. La, Vi- La, La Vi- Viva Loca. Yes, La Viva Loca, which was a, like the Latin inspired party. Yeah. Awesome. They had a medley of different types of uh, Spanish music. So I really enjoyed it. They also had an awesome 80s party. They had a crazy, sexy, cool 90s party. They had a sailway party, like on the first night when we left. 
and actually tonight this is the last night of the cruise there's there should be actually a, a party starting relatively soon yeah um for the last night of the cruise well the good thing is that they did have the parties those were pretty cool mm -hmm. you know it was, it this, was these were better attended than some of the previous ships yeah because sometimes they would have a nightclub in, on some of those other ships and now with the uh, and the there theater, would be nobody in there the theater the theater uh is is the dance club the dance yeah. you know so the area. the seats on the especially towards the bottom uh closest to the stage are like i guess you can call it retractable so they kind of push back and so therefore they open up the bottom to to just be a dance floor the downside is there's no seats Right. So like well, they, really had, they had seats on the side. They had like a, 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 only a few a couple, little lounge sofas or whatever, and then that's pretty much it. That's it. There's not much seating, and there's no tables or anything like that. So therefore, you know, it, it, unless you're there to really dance or observe, then yeah. you can't really just sit down and drink and enjoy. It was all right. It was okay. Um, I guess this is the last part, man. Now, now it's time for the. Uh, the closing arguments. The palm trees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Overall, I really enjoyed the Viva. Yeah, we always point out the we always point out the stuff that we didn't like too much. But I always feel like it's a it's a NCL in general is always a great experience. And these newer ships kind of made us feel a little more luxurious and pampered than what we've been accustomed to, which is fun. Alright, maybe Maybe I'm just not being realistic with myself because I do like the fun. I do like the basketball and everything else. It is rather chill. We do have a... It's a, a really relaxing know, time. Yeah, it's, it's, it's chill. You know, the good food, you know, the drinks, um, you know, the nice areas to, uh, you know, take it easy, relax. Um, yeah, it's really, it's really cool. I'm always like, very negative when it comes to the basketball court not having that or the lack of activities you know because we did feel like there was a lack of activities on the uh, Prima and the Viva but because this is such an action-packed itinerary like you're literally stopping at a different island every day six days in a row yeah yeah um yeah there was no sea day so therefore I think it was less noticeable that there were not as many activities Right. And yeah. then they had theme parties at night. Like, I, again, it might not be the level of fun that you might have, we might have had on like the Mardi Gras, but it definitely was a relaxing time with a little splatter of fun mixed in the mix. I'm thinking about it right now, and and yeah, that makes sense, right? In the daytime, you're you're not gonna you know find that many things to do like activity wise i mean they they did have activities yeah you know, yeah they did have activities you know, here and there but again um, i think i like to be outdoor more on this particular cruise i like to be outdoors more so like going around on ocean boulevard i really enjoyed that or you know um you know sitting uh, at, at the infinity pool like in that area yeah that was cool also i think that we found other things to do and just not a lot of playing games and all that other stuff that we tend to do when we're on, you know, at sea days. I do believe that the Viva and the Prima uh, ships for Norwegian, they're, they're solid ships. They're beautiful ships, you know, amazing decor. It is a luxury-ish kind yeah, of cruise. Yeah, it's definitely cruise. classier ships. Like, you, you are going to feel... Like you're on a like, like a nice floating resort as opposed to a right. you know something that's a little more low budget. Yeah, and 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 again, I'll go back to like the Norwegian, uh, not the Norwegian, the uh, the Virgin uh, Vir Virgin, Virgin Voyages, Voyage. Scarlet, Scarlet Lady, Lady mm -hmm. where you're, it it looks like a boutique hotel in Miami, mm -hmm. you know, whereas the Norwegian Prima, the Viva. This they is look, like a, a island resort. Yeah, I they look say more Miami. like um, I don't know what Caribbean uh, resort. I don't know what kind of resorts like uh, the five star resort type of uh, <gasps> like sandals. Yeah, you know, well, I don't, I don't even know. Like the Ritz Carlton, you know, like those are like really nice looking Swanky. places. So that's what you kind of get. The food is great. You know, you can't go wrong with the food on the Norwegian Viva. You can't go wrong, you know, with the decor. Really beautiful 
spaces. You know, if you're looking for a cruise that gives you the luxury vibes, awesome food, like really great food, good bars, like solid bars, drinks, yes. Uh, uh, entertainment if you're lucky to actually see the musical or the musicals without any issues top-notch service like the the servers the waiters the waitresses the bartenders even the housekeeping everyone is just like so great yeah like, there is yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. no complaints there so yeah again if, if you're looking to go on a, on a cruise like this especially with the itinerary being six six different islands in seven days, you know, you know, if you go to Puerto Rico and you're and there, you're leaving from Puerto yeah, Rico. If you're, if you're there in Puerto Rico, you go on a Friday. You're there for two nights to enjoy the island, and then leave from there. You have seven seven islands in seven days. Like that is the ideal crew that you want. Um, yeah, this is this is the cruise for you. Like this is the cruise for you. It's a little pricier, but this is the cruise for you. If but you, you get a lot of bang for your buck, honestly. Yeah. If you're just looking to chill and just relax, this, this is definitely the one for you. Thank you for taking the time to watch the full review. We really appreciate it. We know it was long, but we're glad that you stuck with it. Hopefully you found a lot of useful information. It really means a great deal to us. If you haven't already done so, please hit that subscribe button. Click on that like button. It really helps us out. We, we truly, truly appreciate it. Check out our Instagram at official underscore down to vacate. We have a lot more stuff planned uh, for the future. So don't forget to uh, check us out. Are you down to vacate? I am.